Hello everyone, this is Roger Brogan, and today we're going to learn how to create an Azure function in F Sharp that's triggered by a Cosmos DB update. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to start off with a new project here, and uh, I'm in Visual Studio 2017, and I'm going to pick Azure function here. We'll just leave it function app 2. Go ahead and click OK. And this is where I'm going to pick the V2 of the Azure functions using .NET standard. And we have a template here for the Cosmos DB trigger. You might say, well, why are you starting with a C Sharp project instead of F Sharp? Well, we don't have a template for that yet. So that's, that's kind of the point here. So the C Sharp one is close enough and we can convert that over pretty close. So I'll just put in a connection string setting name for this. I'll just call it local and uh, the database name here. I'm just going to call this test DB and then for the collection name we'll just do test call here and I'll go ahead and click OK and as this uh, creates the project here we'll see that it just uh, gives us a little function here and it sets up these attributes and uh, it's going to pull down some packages and build and essentially what it does is it's going to watch this this database here it's going to just log out some information when it gets a change notification here how many uh, documents have been changed and then which document ID is the first document ID that was that was changed so at this point I want to convert it into F sharp so the way that I like to do this is actually just uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go on a file explorer here. And I'm going to close Visual Studio. Save these changes. And from here, I'm just going to rename this. Rename this to FSProj. Yes, I want to rename it. Change function 1. Rename this guy over to F sharp. And, and the reason I like to do this outside of this is because when I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and reload this project here. And when I reload the project, it's going to uh, generate a new solution file with the correct project type quid. Because uh, if you don't do this and you try and open the old solution file, Visual Studio doesn't behave well. It, it won't accept breakpoints and it does uh, some strange things like the debugger won't work. Okay, you might also note immediately here too that uh, we don't see any of our files. So let's let's go ahead and add our files back here. Um, we need this one, and uh, we're also going to need uh, the local settings. So we'll just go ahead and add both of those back. Um, you could add host JSON too. I suppose it doesn't have much information at this point, but we'll just go ahead and add those back. Now the local settings, you want to make sure that this has the you know copy if newer or copy always setting on there and at this point this guy's going to be pretty unhappy here so let's just fix this up here we can chop the namespace out put it at the top turn these into opens turn this into just a module And we'll fix up some other things here. It's not happy with the attribute. Put the angle brackets in there to make that happy. Let's just let our run command. And we'll just put all this on one line here. This will get this all fixed up. Need to change those colons into equals. And let's get the rest of this fixed up here. Note, this is where the wizard took these. You know, the wizard, this is where it took the values that we insert. Just put them in these, these attribute values here. So put another angle bracket in there. Let's get this up here. This is the default uh, lease collection name, leases, very aptly named. Let's put that 
closing bracket and let's swap these guys around here. Same for a logger. Put an equal sign there. Let's see what we've got. The rest of the stuff we can just clean up the rest of the unnecessary curlies. And let's fix this up a little bit here. That's un unhappy that I'm trying to add an integer in there. And this is the incorrect sequence or index operator. OK, so at this point, we've got um, this all fixed up into F sharp world. And uh, if we go ahead and run at this point, uh, we're going to get an error message. And I'll show you the error message just to show you what you guys might encounter if you're doing this. And it's uh, this one is a really good error message, actually, right? It says, I uh, can't find the connection string and make sure the app setting exists and has a value. Well, that's a, that's a pretty descriptive error message, which is uh, fantastic for a change. Go over to Azure Data or Cosmos Data Explorer. And uh, like I said before, if you guys are not uh, using the local uh, Cosmos DB emulator, it's a it's a great little uh, application. I've got a link to it in the blog article if you want to go out and find that, or you can just uh, search on the web for Cosmos DB emulator, uh, download and install it, and you've got a local little Cosmos DB running. And on the quick start here, you can have the uh, connection string. So if we copy the connection string here, then we do need to go over here and put this in the local settings file and whatever we call it I think I called it local here and uh, we'll just put that in there don't worry about this being a secret this is the same secret key for all of the local emulators so not a big deal um, and if we get that set up we'll save our new solution file and it's once again it's keying on this attribute from right here the connection string setting local Right, so it just matches that in the local settings JSON and then uses the connection string in there to connect to um, Cosmos. Now, while this is firing up, we should get a clean start here this time. Looks good, no error messages. Okay. And if we hop back over to our Explorer here, we can go into the one that I set up. I, I, you're going to have to set this up before. Just add a database called TestDB, um, add a collection called Test Call, and then also add your collection for leases. If you don't add the leases collection, it'll give you an error saying that uh, it can't open that collection. So once again, that's pretty clear and pretty easy to uh, change. So if I go ahead and add a new document, um, Give it an ID for you know, whatever we want here. Could put uh, something else in our document here. Put a nice message. And then go ahead and save this. Then we should get the code executed. Here we go. We've got our document ID. And just to prove that the debugger is also working, let's go ahead and set a breakpoint. And let's go ahead and execute the app here. And I'm going to go ahead and make a change to the uh, Cosmos DB collection. Go ahead and add a new document. Pull this over so you guys can see. And uh, there we go. We've uh, added a new document, and uh, the debugger has stopped on this one here. I've added a new one, added a new document there, the one with a large ID. That was uh, this document that I added over here. And uh, go ahead and continue that out, and then go ahead and stop. And there you go. There is the uh, Azure function in F-sharp, triggered by Cosmos DB Trigger. Thanks a lot.